So an exciting morning this morning here at St. George's. We are getting ready for the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair with, oh, one of our bright future scientists. Um, Raymond, first of all, how exciting is it for you to be a part of this competition? Because this is kind of like, I guess it's like the finals, right? Yes, <laughs> it's very exciting. Um, actually, we have over uh, 500 candidates who attend the Canada-wide Science Fair every single year. And from that, uh, we have a separate selection process of 60 candidates, and we gradually narrow that down into the 12 finalists. So it's extremely humbling to be a part of one of those 12 on the team. Well, I'm honored to be with you. Tell us a little bit about your innovation. Absolutely. So what I did was uh, I did some research with aircraft cabin airflow and using computational simulations as well as physical simulations in order to investigate investigate how airflow patterns uh, happen in the cabin and to implement measures to reduce the risk of disease transmission. Okay, so when we talk about things like air quality, I mean, this is something that people will be very interested in because I'm like thinking, now where, where do I want to sit? Where's the best seat? Yes, yeah. <laughs> so theor theoretically, where would be the best place according to what you have researched? Mm -hmm. So what I did with uh, my research over here is that we can actually see the, how the air flows according to this global velocity vector plot. And what we see is that sometimes when the air comes down, uh, it hits the aisle seated passengers first. And as it curves through, what the aisle seated passenger breathes out is actually what goes into the mouths of passengers who are seated, seated uh, right next to the window. And that's clearly a huge issue and we need to do something about that. So I'm thinking what that translates into something I understand is aisle seats, our best. Well, good luck to you. We're going to hear from more from you as well, but we should point out there are several students um, in Vancouver that are participating. Um, we look forward to hearing the results. We have more coming up. Well, a super interesting morning, and it's very educational, I must say, as we're getting ready for the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. Raymond, we got a little bit of a, a preview of your innovation that you're going to the fair with. Now we're actually seeing and touching something here. What is this? So this is a physical model of the inside of an aircraft cabin. And using this model, I'm able to precisely replicate the conditions inside a real airplane, but with a scale, with a scale model. So this is actually made out of what? How was it created? So this is actually made out of various materials, and it's been through a 3D printing process. Um, so really getting in that precision to transfer from the physical model into the computer models. That is incredible, and that took probably quite a bit of time to create. Yes, it did. <laughs> what, a couple of months, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, so we have a physical model, but we need to be able to visualize, obviously, what you found, and this has to do with air quality in airplanes. So what are we seeing now? Yes, yeah, so over here what we have is a simulation going on of an example of a passenger sneezing. And you can see that when the passenger sneezes, the, all the pathogen particles go around in cycles throughout the entire cabin, spreading those germs and diseases throughout the cabin. And basically my project focuses on taking this issue and analyzing how we can better improve the airflow inside the cabins. I like that. I'm starting to think that I should maybe hang out with you more. I would learn a lot and probably live a better quality, <laughs> better air quality life. Thank you so much. Good luck in the fair. Uh, we look forward to hearing the results by the end of May. Thank you All very right. much. The Intel International Science and Engineering Fair is just around the corner. And incidentally, it's the largest pre-college international science fair in the world. In the world, in I the guess. World, yeah. Wow, this is so cool. So we met um, Raymond, who obviously goes here to St. George's yeah. as well. But this is actually a, a huge competition. We have quite the Team Canada. How many members? I think, believe twelve across Canada. Yeah. And in BC, five from BC and uh, two from the school, which is pretty sweet. The, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> yeah. sweet, I would have to say. And I'm learning a ton. Let's talk a little bit before we get to your innovation um, about your inspiration. Yeah. So the inspiration really came in the summer of 2012 when my six-year-old neighbor Toby was learning to ride his bicycle. He was going down the street in front of my house and. Unfortunately, he crashed into the back of my mom's car. Now, when he did this, he pitched over the handlebars and was in the ER for hours and looked like a disaster when he was out. And I remember thinking to myself, how can someone who is traveling so slowly and wearing so much safety gear sustain such a serious injury? So I did some research and I found that, and I found, well, just very little safety innovation with regards to the bicycle frame itself. And I actually found that the basic bicycle frame has remained largely unchanged for over a hundred years. So that's when I set to work on this project. And so when you talk about a project like this, how long, I mean, we're going to take a look at your actual innovation, but how long did it take you to sort of bring it to some sort of fruition? Well, the initial project from idea to fruition took 
more or less about a year, about 10 months. Yeah. And, and could make some lasting impact. We're going to show you how this could actually make a difference in bike safety coming up in the next segment with Duncan. Well, we've already seen the inspiration be behind Duncan's submission for the uh, Intel International, International Science, Science and, and Engineering, Engineering Fair. Fair. See, I get yeah. complicated with even saying that. I can't even imagine what it's like to create <laughs> something that could yeah. actually make a difference. <laughs> yeah. So we've seen the inspiration. What is the ultimate goal? Well, really the ultimate goal is to create a novel bicycle frame that you could ride around normally, but in the event of a front-end collision, the front fork is forced backwards and can absorb some of the energy and stop the rider from kicking over the handlebars. So we're seeing a video right now that sort of demonstrates that, and it is an obvious difference. This really could make a massive uh, impact on bike safety. Yeah, really what you're seeing in the videos is just how violent the impact is on a standard rigid frame and you can just see in the test video how much smoother it is because the energy can be absorbed by the springs. So now what we're seeing in the video is actually the initial stages of what you have created and you've refined it so what are the major differences? Yeah so really between the, the, or the three major differences between that version and the, this version which I'm taking to ISEF is first of all um, it uses one spring as opposed to three. Second of all um, the kickback has been eliminated and lastly I can control the amount of resistance by the shape of the discs. Okay, and we're actually seeing a bit of a, an image there that shows how this works here, right? How long did it actually take for you to create this uh, this innovation here? Uh, same as, about, as the original project, about 10 months to a year. That is incredible. And we should point out, speaking of incredible, you've got big things coming to you in the fall. Where yeah. are you going? I got into Harvard, which is pretty awesome. Are you pretty pumped? <laughs> yeah. Pretty, <laughs> pretty pumped, pumped, absolutely. And bet you're yeah. pumped for the fair as well. Um, we're looking forward to hearing the results. By the way, again, 12 members in Team Canada, five in BC. We should be very, very proud. Good luck to you. Thank you.